History and current polling both tell us that the House of Representatives will likely flip over to Republican control in the November midterms. What happens then? Actual governors will come to a standstill. There will be a flurry of investigations on everything from the Justice Department to Hunter Biden to the border crisis. The January 6th committee will almost certainly be disbanded. And it is not implausible to imagine that President Biden will be impeached. How did we get here? There are, of course, many reasons, but the central facilitating factor is surely the way that American politics has, over the last few decades, increasingly empowered the extremes of political parties at the expense of the mainstream. The primary system used by American parties to choose their candidates is extremely unusual. No other major democracy has one quite like it. Primaries ensure that candidates chosen are selected by a sliver of the party around 20% of voters. And this selection is not at all representative. These are the most intense, agitated activists, often far more extreme in their views than run-of-the-mill registered Republicans or Democrats. Add to this decades of sophisticated, computer-enabled gerrymandering, and you get extreme candidates who run in safe districts where the only threat to them is a primary candidate who is even more extreme. The Washington Post has analyzed Republicans running for Senate, House, and certain statewide offices and found that a majority could be classified as election deniers, people who have in some way questioned, challenged, or refused to accept the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Of these 291 candidates, 171 are running in safe Republican districts. So what began as a fringe theory promoted by Donald Trump but initially rejected by most of the Republican Party's leaders, has now become the majority view of the party. Election denial is not a majority view in the United States. In an NBC poll, 57% of those asked said they would be less likely to vote for someone who claims Trump won the 2020 election, while only 21% said they would be more likely to support an election denier. But between primaries and gerrymandering, the majority view gets drowned out. Catering to the right-wing base also means constantly ratcheting up the rhetoric. Nancy Pelosi is a would-be dictator. Biden is a communist. Democrats are pro-criminals. Marjorie Taylor Greene has said, quote, Democrats want Republicans dead, and they have already started the killings, unquote. The alternative system of candidate selection used in America before the age of primaries and in most other major democracies is what is often called a smoke-filled room, a pejorative description even before we knew that smoking killed you. In this system, candidates are selected by party bosses. But consider who these bosses have traditionally been. Aldermen, mayors, governors, and legislators at all levels. These are people who have won general elections, by appealing to the entire electorate, people who have a feel for the broader public. No group of party elders, for example, would ever choose a candidate like Herschel Walker. Primaries, by contrast, entrust candidate selection to the most radical section of the party. And social media has added fuel to the fire by amplifying the noisiest and angriest voices within the party who are themselves an even smaller group than primary voters. While the problem is far worse and much more dangerous on the Republican side, these pressures do also affect Democrats. Many of the issues where Joe Biden is constrained in his actions, in particular immigration and energy, are ones where the activist base of the party has much more extreme views than the mainstream. And pivoting to the center, as Pennsylvania Senate candidate John Fetterman did on fracking in recent months, is increasingly difficult in today's world where you can instantly and easily play old clips of a politician before he changed his mind. In a recent piece in the New York Times, Max Fisher describes how the recent dysfunctions of British politics can be attributed to the two main parties choosing over the last two decades to adopt more of a primary type system to select their leader. The Labour Party ended up with the totally unelectable far left leader like Jeremy Corbyn and rejected a charismatic moderate like David Miliband. The recent Conservative Party travails illustrate the problem perfectly. Liz Truss, with her totally impractical, warmed-over Thatcherism, 
almost always came third in votes from elected members of parliament, the old system of party bosses. But she was the darling of the broader party membership, which is highly unrepresentative of the British public, and they were the ones who made the final decision. It is not an accident that Germany and France have both been run largely by solid centrists in a time of populism. They have chosen to keep to the old system of democracy based on the principle of majority rule. In America, and to an extent in Britain, democracy has actually become minority rule, and the minority holding power is unrepresentative, angry, and increasingly radical.